Yeah. We've been having this conversation as we look at the exit polls and it shows that, you know, uh, Latinos voted more for Trump than they did in 2016. And you're like, OK, but what's a Latino? That's a made up construct. I'm sorry. You speak Spanish. That's a language. Uh, there is culture uh, attached to Latin America, whatever that is. But that's also some colonized designation. You know, um, it's weird to me that people would run to a designation that was made up in the 70s and put on the census. You've always been in that in that space of understanding blackness. And I, you know, I admire it. I love it. But you have caught bricks because of it. Talk a little bit about that. And, and I'm glad that we're seeing a turn because we need those strength in numbers. The numbers mm -hmm. matter. You know, this yes. is a numbers yeah, game. people. That's all it is. Talk about that, Rosa. Yeah, and let me acknowledge I'm not I'm not a Democrat, but for I'm not a Republican. I'm in the Green Party. <laughs> Just to make it clear, I'm not a Republican. Um, honestly, you know, to see particularly and the numbers are clear that if it was not for African American women and then other people of color, he wouldn't have won the election, right? So Biden, it's a Biden fascinating would not have. thing. Biden Biden wouldn't have won. And people right. say 5 million votes is a lot to overcome. But essentially, like, Biden could have won Florida if he had just gone and talked to Puerto Ricans and not 70-year-old white Cubans who are mad about the revolution, you know, and who've been mad for 50 years Max. about it. But, you know, so one of the main things is we're, we're still not a demographic where you can check us off, right? So if you see any census or any information gathering, it'll say, like, African-American, Black, Latino, not black, Hispanic, not white. And you're like, what? Uh, Afro Latino, or for me, black Latina does not exist. Okay. So the demo, there's no demographic information. So we get lumped into that 65 million Latinos. And some did this. And well, yes, yeah, 65 million Latinos. You know, we're not a monolith. I'm not an immigrant. I'm a Puerto Rican. My parents had citizenship to migrate here. So I, I don't have an immigrant experience. I'm from the Caribbean. That's a whole different experience we have as Caribbean folks from Jamaica to Puerto Rico, you know, and I grew up in hip hop. Uh, my identity for me really happened in college. I was just exposed one day to somebody, Dr. Maita Moreno Vega. She spoke, changed my life. And I started identifying as African descendant. Then when I moved to Brooklyn, New York in the early 2000s, I joined the Malcolm X grassroots movement. I was like, yo, I'm black. You know, so my comrades in Malcolm X and other spaces, um, people might say predominantly African-American spaces, black spaces, I've never had an issue being included. The issue always comes out of the quote Latino community. And then it's very geographical. Like if I go to Chicago now, this is how mad Latinos are repping. If I go to like Las Vegas, there's no Puerto Ricans, my family maybe, but it's mostly Central American migrants. So we just have different experiences that get lumped into one thing. And I think what we should be talking about, and I'm sure you have talked about it, is that why are more white women voted for Trump in 2020 than 2016? How is that? I'm so now the 55 percent. We call it the 55 percent. Yeah. Is that what I, that's what so I call six them. out of ten in y'all. When I see y'all, y'all voted for Trump. Is that how we're rolling? Okay. You know, and yes, African American men, Latino men voted for Trump, but not in overwhelming numbers, and also just a massive amount of young people voted for the first time, and they're coming out of Black Lives Matter visually seen and if not able to participate and seeing us six years later like this maniac had to go period like he has to go more people are going to die around this crisis and other things but my identity for me like it it makes me who i am you know it centers me i tell people i'm a black latina my experience is different than an african-american woman and i think that's what ended up happening with um, Eva Longoria, when she made those statements, you know, that there, even though there's some of us like me who say we're Black Latina, I also have to be very clear on the African American woman freedom struggle um, and, and colorism and all of that stuff, right? But that I am Black and I am African descendant. And this, at this moment, we should all be coming together under the solidarity of operational unity. Like, not only do we have to worry about him, everything that people end up thinking that Obama, um, Biden and Harris could do, 
I think people better temper down a little bit of, of what the, you know, they're, they're expecting them to do. The only way they're going to do anything is they get pushed to do just like any mm, other president. And right. there's no other way you, there's never been an election since I've been alive. where like, we're that close to maybe being on some policy tables and all of that. But at the end, even those brothers and sisters that represent us there, hopefully with the right politic, we still got to be in the streets. It's not like police yeah. shootings are going to stop or that inequity is not going to grow. It does if we really make this presidency what is supposed to be a government for the people. But I don't think we're that close to that yet because we're still, like I said, dealing with capitalism. So, um, yeah, um, it's been a good six months to see people contending with who's saying, don't call me Hispanic. You know, I don't even like the word Latinx, which only 2% of Latinos even know what that word means. <laughs> which, you know, I'm, <laughs> always, I'm always reading the reports and I'm like, yeah, because in our communities at the end of the day, we're going to go somewhere. And so what are you? Puerto Rican, Dominican. I'm from Barbados. I'm from Jamaica. I'm from Nigeria. I mean, we have that nuance with our people. And then, most of us with the right politics would be like, that's a black diaspora. There's a Puerto Rican diaspora. There's all diasporas because we've been either taken from our homelands or have immigrated or migrated here. And we create that vastness of blackness. So I'm always telling people blackness should include, but it also should be about a black politic of freedom and self-determination. And we should not be excluding people who find their identity as an African descendant or a black Dominicano, um, but who's also understanding that you can't just use that like a brand. If you're about that life, then you have to be about fighting for black freedom, period. And if you're not, then you shouldn't be calling yourself Afro or black Latino, Latina, Latinx. I love it. Today is also Unity Umoja on the Karen Hunter Show. It's Monday Mover. We got a Monday Mover in the building, Rosa E. Clemente.